Hello! Today I wanted to share with you guys a quick data engineering slash automation project that I've done last year. In this video I'm going to show how to get your GitHub looking like this without actually having to code every single day of the year. So for this project I'm going to use Python and AWS to deploy my code and of course GitHub. I've attached the code in the description down below if you're interested in that aspect. You can clone the repo and have fun with it. However, if you want to see how to deploy it and have it running continuously on Amazon Cloud, keep watching. So let's get started. So, before we get into the coding, I want to go over the tools that we're going to use, why we're using them and how we're going to use them. Well, I decided to use Python because of a couple different reasons. First, there's a nice pip package that interfaces very, very nicely with the GitHub API, so we can use uh, with minimal effort. Also, it's the language that I'm the most comfortable with, so that kind of kills two birds with one stone. I've also decided to use AWS since I wanted to minimize cost, and I also wanted to minimize the amount of effort required for me to intervene and or maintain any kind of system. So I've worked on AWS before, so I figured that using AWS and Python, I'll be able to build something that can last a long time. So what does the architecture of this project actually looks like? Well, before answering this question, let's first set up some minimal requirements. I think that what we need to build to accomplish our goal is to be able to commit to GitHub at least once a day for every single day for the rest of the year. We also try to keep an eye on cost in the sense that we want to minimize cost. So, in order to do both things, I decided to go ahead and build a serverless architecture. So here it is. In other words, if you're not familiar with serverless, it means that instead of having to rent a virtual machine for an entire day or a period of time, you instead can use a managed service to run your script. So, so this will save me huge amounts of money because I will get billed only for the runtime of that script rather than being billed for the whole entire day of renting that virtual machine. In this case, I decided to use Lambda to run my code based on a CloudWatch trigger, which turns on every day at midnight. So every day at midnight, CloudWatch pings Lambda and says, hey, run this Lambda function that's going to commit this code to GitHub. So before getting into the code and to the Amazon console, we first need to set up our GitHub properly. The first thing we need to do is create a new repository that we want to use for this specific project. After we have a repository, let's create a readme.md file. This is the file that we will use to update every single day. Next, we will need to create a personal access token from GitHub. This token will be used by our function to authenticate every day to commit on our behalf. So in order to do this, let's go to the settings, developer setting, then personal access token, and let's create a new token. So after we give it a name, select the minimum amount of permission, which is just the first box. Let's paste that somewhere and save it for later on because we're going to need it in our code. So now we're all set up with our GitHub. We have our repository, our file, and our access token. Now let's look at the code. So the code is pretty straightforward. It's just 10 lines. First, we import our Python package. Then we define a function that takes an event and a context, since this is how Lambda functions will be invoked. And then we log in with our personal access token. We get the repository and the markdown file. And then we finally just append to that. So now let's go ahead onto our AWS console. Here we're on our Amazon Lambda dashboard page. We're going to find this by simply looking up Lambda in the search bar. But now let's go ahead and create a new function. So here, we're going to head and give it a new name. We're going to call it GitHub Automated Test, uh, in my case. And then for the next thing, we're going to choose Python 3.7 as our runtime. Go ahead and create a new function. In the meanwhile, we want to make sure that we have a folder with our commit.py file that has the code that I showed you earlier, as well as the dependencies for the file to run. We're going to want to upload all of our code to Amazon and we're going to go to this by actions and then hit upload. Here we're going to pick up the zip folder that has all of our code and it's going to take a few seconds. So 
after the code is almost done uploading the next thing we want to do is change our lambda handler in the runtime settings we're going to go ahead and switch it to commit that multiple commits and this comes from commit which is the python file name and multiple commits is the python function that we just created in the, that python file name now the last thing we need to do is to add a trigger we're going to go ahead and pick an event bridge trigger here we're going to go ahead and create a new rule that we want to run our lambda on a daily basis so we're going to give it a name so in this case let's just call it whatever every single day and then for the schedule we're just going to say rate one day so this is going to trigger on a daily basis after all that is set up make sure that the trigger is enabled and let's add it to our function now we should be all set up to have our lambda function run on a daily basis so that wraps up the walkthrough on how to automate getting a green github for this year there are going to be other options <clears throat> so of course there are different ways of doing this for example if you're familiar with javascript there's an npm package for github that you can use that will also facilitate your interaction with the platform let me know in the comments down below if you were able to use a different programming language or a different cloud provider so we can all learn from each other and feel free to share the code you can add more complexity to this logic later on i figured i would share this kind of a baseline and then you can do all kinds of fancy stuff with it use this as a starting point if you like this kind of videos with projects and more hands-on let me know in the comments down below until next week see you then bye